the athletic director here at St. John's University. Eric Barkley suspended for today's game. And as you heard Ed say, they hope to have him back early next week. Well, that is clearly a an unhappy athletic director. I mean, he, he is not just saying, hey, this is uh, something we did wrong and so on and so forth. He clearly does did not want to do this. He clearly is in support of his player. And uh, some strong words from Ed Mineta. Indeed. Gucci Thornton, and on to a good start. He's playing with three fouls. His first field goal of the day. Well, you can read. Bell gets sure it right they... back. <laughs> the two guys who were supposed to be scoring and aren't come back in the start in the first half, start the second half, and immediately get on the board. Bell and Thornton. Some pressure from the Boston College Eagles. It'll be Gray, Jesse, Thornton, Postel. And Glover starting for the Red Storm. Harley playing with three fouls. Bell, Singletary, Agby, and Cotton for Boston College. Steal Very by slow Harley. movement, huh, Dave? Very slow movement Indeed. by St. John's. Risky pass. Not a good one from Harley as Bootsy Thornton. Check that Gray comes back the other way. It seems like St. John's really has no rhythm to their offense in this game at all. Part of it is obviously personnel, but the ball's not moving quickly. Each guy catches it, holds it for about three or four seconds, trying to decide what to run. Not a lot of movement of the ball quickly. That's the first reversal we've seen all day right there. Bootsy over the top, kept alive by Postel to Gray. They try to go inside to Glover. Glover, and they get a foul before on Agby. Now that was a little bit more precise passing by St. John's and sort of the thing that you're used to. They have a good passing team. Agby, the only big guy and not on the scoreboard yet for Boston College. Singletary doing a little bit more damage and the bench players coming in getting a few points here and there. Cotton and Walls. So Al Skinner not happy with what Walls has done. Meanwhile, Agby picked up his third foul. Certainly the continuity, the flow is definitely lost with Eric Barkley out of the lineup. Well, they don't have anybody at the end that can break down. If the team's playing good defense at the end of a shot clock, just take it and create for yourself or create for somebody else. Postel goes hard to the hole, draws a foul. I think St. John's needs to do a little bit more taking the ball to the glass with the dribble. Personal They're foul. spreading the floor out nicely. Mike Jarvis talking to his guys about what he wants from them. They need to take the ball hard because they have the ability to do that. Storm, Singletary's foul, his second sends Postel to the line. This is a very important game for the Red Storm. You know, with their guys out, they've really got to come up with a W here. They've lost four out of five against very good competition in tough situations, and right. they've given several games away with poor ball handling at the end and, and teams getting big runs on Mike Jarvis's squad near the end of games. As far as you're concerned, is that the, that's the rub, though, the four out of five, the fact that they haven't been able to close out. Yeah, well, exactly, and they haven't. I mean, they should have beat Ohio State. I think that was clear. They really made some silly plays at the end of that game. At Notre Dame, although Notre Dame hasn't lost many games, only to Miami and Vanderbilt at home, they really 17-2 to two run there. And, of course, you know, those kind of situations become uh, problematical. They grow on you. Especially in you, when you're in New York, people asking you about it all the time, the media asking about it all the time. Part of life. Yeah. Part of the fabric. <laughs> that's, that's right. The fabric is right. <laughs> that and tall buildings. That's it. Two minutes in. People want to know. Postel drives it to the hole, but the left hand shoots it short. Glover lost it out of bounds. Well, I think that's what they need to do, and they're trying to do a little bit more of it right now. Postel, certainly an explosive kind of player. They've been asking for... Postel to drive to the basket. He has not shot well from the field of late. Little zone action by St. John's. Trying to force the perimeter shot. They better be awake for Troy Bell. Cross court right in the corner here. Here's Bell. There's the cutter inside. Harley loses. And a break. Pass does not connect. Singletary back the other way after the wall steal. Walls back to Singletary. That's a three. Got it. Well, that's a wide Singletary. open. If Thornton is in the game or if Barkley's in the game, it's a layup for St. John's. Everybody's back on defense. The turnover right there, ill-advised play by Gray, leads to a three. Five-point swing. Nice move, getting deep. Reggie Jesse. He's got six. Singletary leading Boston College with ten points. He's got two threes this afternoon. You mentioned Jesse with six. You know, he had 11 straight games where he had double digits. Then he had eight straight games where he was in single digits. Hard to explain that. 
Cotton takes a look at it, finds Walls. Bell was open, was calling for it. And Walls is a beat too late, much to the frustration of Mr. Bell. Villanova leading at Georgetown by eight in the second half. UConn, Michigan State, that's a good one out in East Lansing. And there's a three ball missing. Temple killing Rhode Island. Saw Temple the other day. Here's Gray. Oh, he gave it back to Gray. It turned his back on the play. Bell the other way for Boston College. Pulls up for three. And that's a five, maybe six point swing on that play. That's two possessions. Mike Jarvis has a headache. He needs some Ashman right now. His son wondering what's going on right out there. Chudney Gray made a pass that was a nice pass, but a little bit too much mustard. Didn't and look, and Jesse was throwing the ball back to him. Gray went away from the play. Singletary and Bell taking advantage, knocking in two threes at the other end. Two point game. Boston College down. Bootsy Thornton underneath, and the foul. Right here, Chudney Gray, nice play, but look, he turns around. What's he looking at? He wants oh, to talk man. to the guy over on the bench about what a nice play it was, and look, look, look what happens the other end. He hustles back, but not quite enough, and Bell makes him pay. Foul was on Kenny Walls, his second. And there's a miss by Bootsy Thornton. Thornton needs to get in the rhythm right here. You know, he needs to get a lot of touches and get some run some stuff for him. Well, talk about rhythm. Troy Bell looks like he has found his. He's got three field goals here in the second half, 11 points. And BC hanging tough. Well, you know that Bell's not going to stay silent an entire game. You know, this guy is automatic, 18 to 20 points a game. He's been over 25 five times. But he's going to be there. Cotton thought he had a steal. Jesse finds Glover. Won't go. Tip won't go. Stays with it. Had it blocked. And Walls will take over for Boston College. The Eagles, here's a steal by Gray. Nice play by Chutney Gray. He makes up for that other miss, too, a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> well, he wanted to make up for it, that's for sure. And he did it right there. St. John's will attack you. St. John's by four. We got a timeout with 15 18 to go. And a red storm. Plus four right now at home. Look at this underneath. Great battle, Singletary going after Glover. Well, lots of action right here. If you're not playing nicely and smoothly, you might as well be aggressive. And of course, right here, an errant pass. Chudney Gray trying to make up for his errant pass. Comes in, gets a little dunk, gets the spirit going. Take a look at the field goal percentage right here. Turnover's about even. Neither team doing a great job shooting. Four points to St. John's lead. They post up. Agby, and he'll get to shoot a couple. Donald Emanuel picks up the foul, and that'll be his second. He going to law school? He's trying to <laughs> plead his case here. A lot of good law schools here in the New York metropolitan area. <laughs> Agby, not very much in evidence in this game at all. Coming off a very good game, his best game of the year, 16 and 10 against Rutgers. Zero points tonight. A freshman from Archbishop Malloy. You could uh, about a three-point shot from this campus right here. The Jarvis family on the bench there. Watches Agby nail the first free throw. Yuka's at 67% on the season. It's his first free throw today. Right for New York City legend Jack Curran. Kenny Anderson and lots of others played there. Kenny Smith. Kevin Joyce, yeah, lots of great players. Two-point game right now. St. John's with the ball and a foul. They get Reggie Jesse an illegal pick on Dwayne Pena. Really took a blow there. Foul on Reggie Jesse, his first. I don't see enthusiasm in the St. John's players. You know, I don't know whether it's the Barkley situation bothering them or what exactly the situation is, but the whole thing is kind of led them to uh, not play as aggressively as they normally do. Well, it's a big test for them, no doubt about it. They still have some huge games remaining, not only in the conference, but out of the conference. Well, they got the Dukies again. That's right, and it's at Duke this time. BC's last lead was at 9-8. And Jesse takes it away. 
and then dribbles it off his foot. Cotton takes over. Here comes Pina. He can't throw it. The Singletary's wide open. Maintains control, and he calls a timeout. A timeout called by Boston College. Wow. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Well, Mike's sitting with his, looking like the thinker there, with his hand on his uh, jaw. Al Skinner trying to negotiate an upset right here under favorable circumstances. That man having difficult circumstances today. His team not playing as well as they have played. And uh, with Barkley out, I think that makes a big difference to his team. Kids sure having difficulty adjusting to that. Game's a little bit more sloppy than it usually is for St. John's. St. John's next game's at Providence, then they have Villanova coming in next weekend. At Boston College, Syracuse at home, Connecticut at home, at Duke, Seton Hall, and then Miami right before the Big Whoa. East Tournament. Those last five are amazing? very, very tough Ooh. games. You know, with the schedule the way it is, only 16 league games this year. Next year, it's going to be a little bit different. There'll be two divisions in the Big East Conference, seven on one side, seven on the other side, with the addition of Virginia Tech. You bet. You play uh, the teams in your division twice, twice and just four teams from the other division. Knocked away. Gray with the steal. Who does Slick. a great job to get away from Bell. Takes it all the way down. Runner way too strong. Hit Glover. No, it will go. Put back. Boots he finished. And that's what James Jones is a signature on the offensive glass. They have an aggressive nature, and that's the way they should play. Six points for Bootsy Thornton, a four-point lead again for, uh, for St. John's over BC. They need to do more of that if they're going to win this game. Go on the corner to Cotton. Back up to Bell. And this Bell's guy needs to get three going. here in the second. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow, what a shot. He's got 13. I'll tell you what, he has really been the surprise of the league in terms of freshmen coming in. Darius Lane also from Minneapolis, Minnesota also. As a matter of fact, these two freshmen both from the same city. Back door, Bootsy can't catch. For the lead, or at very least a tie. This is for the lead. Bell can't get it. They keep it alive. Postel, Singletary, foul on Singletary. Singletary with the second, make that his third foul. Well, the aggressive nature of St. John's is displayed right here. Three or four guys going to the offensive boards, keeping it alive, being aggressive in there, putting it back on the glass. Instead of standing around, they might be better off just shooting one up on the glass and have everybody attack. Little weave here. One-on-one -on -one action. Old school. Gray up top, takes it down into the paint, leaves for Emmanuel. What a flush. And it works. Emmanuel with seven points. St. John's searching offensively. Maybe they've come up with something right there. Emmanuel won from his career high. Singletary had to go down and out. St. John's on a breakout. Jesse leads the way. He wants to keep it. Chudley Gray normally would get that ball, but Jesse deciding that he can handle also. They should run the weave again. That's what they're going to do. Postel fires over the top. He the three. Postel for 23% from three-point range. 13 points this afternoon. Largest lead for the Red Storm. Big They're possession. Big possession right here, Dave, for Boston College. Last two times, Bell and Singletary have gotten shots. A little foul off the ball right here, I believe. Chudney Gray. On Chudney. That's his fourth. Well, Heath is going to come in now. So Chudney Gray with his fourth foul, still plenty of time left. 11.47 to go in the ballgame. St. John's up by seven, but that lead could be jeopardized with Gray leaving with his fourth foul. St. John's at the... LeVar Postel, Emmanuel right here coming in, trying to get some action. And of course, the three by Postel right here gives him that 13 points. And if it weren't for him, St. John's would be in trouble. Normally, much more balanced team. Usually, St. John's has five guys in double figures. Postel one for one for three. Here's Bell to get some back, and he does. So 44-40, Troy Bell lighting it up second half. He's got 16 points, 12 here in the second half. He's got three threes this afternoon. See, this kind of action where one guy catches the ball, moves it around slowly 45 feet from the basket. I know they're trying to get set up, but doesn't make the defense do anything. Sure enough. Here's Orvis already career high, 14 minutes played so far. Eric Barkley not playing, suspended, NCAA violation. 
Postel carrying him, Dave. Postel starting to feel it now as he carries on. He's got 15 points. Agby. They want him to shoot. Agby wheels. Got it over both Emmanuel and Postel. So you've got Agby. You know, the closer the underdog stays, the better it is for them. No the doubt. more confidence they develop. And I think we see that right here. Chuddy Gray what? not here, Barkley not here. Man, oh man, I'll tell you what. And this crowd going through some high anxiety, too. You can hear it there expressing themselves. Emmanuel can't make a clean catch. Back to Postel with 13 on the shot clock. Postel pulls up, raises over everybody, rebound. They go for it. Let's see, BC ball. So 10 16 to go here in the ballgame in regulation. And St. John's with a four point lead. Some pressure from the Red Storm. They're trying to go half court trap as well. See if they can't get trapped somebody near the sideline. One, two, two kind of action. Now they get back in man to man once they see that nothing develops. Here's Beer Bomb. He's got one three to his credit today. Ag by. Man, Bell has a quick first step. I'm watching him off the ball. Wow, he is hard to stay with. Give it to Pino with eight on the shot clock. Down low, Ag by wheels. Lost it on the way up. A foul on Emmanuel. That'll be his third. So the fouls mounting on St. John's. Three on Emmanuel. Four on Gray. Three on Bootsy Thornton. Well, Emmanuel chasing around against the flex offense requires the big men to chase away from the basket and then come back. He might be better suited just planting himself in the lane and letting Agby shoot from the outside rather than letting him catch it close to the basket. So Yuka Agby at the Lions, leader at Archbishop Malloy High School, team captain, member of the track and field team as well. That was for St. John, number 20. So Emmanuel will take a seat. Anthony Glover, he's not in foul trouble, but he's 0 for 5 at the free throw line. Well, he's got to get it done. And we're speaking of Glover on the offensive boards. Agby, zero points at halftime, doing a little better in the second half, obviously. Indeed, back to a two-point game. St. John's is led by as many as seven. Great Here's situation. Jesse. They got something. Orvis passes up the shot. And let's see, along the sideline, he stepped on. They turn it over. So... Orvis had an opportunity to tee up a three. 17th turnover by the Red Storm. This is Big East basketball, BC and St. John's from Alumni Hall here in Jamaica, New York. I'm Dave Sims with Bob Wenzel. Very interesting contest today as the Red Storm play without Eric Barkley. Their outstanding point guard. NCAA violation is suspended for today's game. Beer bomb reverses good. And we're tied at 46. St. John's off the ball defense. Not very good right now. The flex offense being effective for Boston College. Yeah. Guys moving in and out. You got a guard all over the floor. Here, Bomb with five points. And Jesse bounces it off his foot out of bounds. Turnover, St. John's. And the crowd starting to get angry here at the nine minute mark in the tie ball game. Well, Barkley's presence never more problematical for St. John's than right now. Last two possessions in a close game, they've turned it over twice. Here's your turnover story. St. John's has lost three of its, check that, four of its last five. Here's Bell, doesn't need much room, gets it up, off the glass, they fight for it. Whose ball? It'll be St. John's ball. Last time down, how about John Beerbaum with the reverse? Yeah, excellent. Here you're talking, he got a screen and that's why he got open. Kind of makes a really nice play and here. And another violation, a moving violation on the inbound by LeVar Postel. So the threads coming loose here on St. John's. And you know, you talked before about them dissolving in late game situations. When things like this begin to happen, it starts wearing on players' minds. Is it happening again? Is it happening again? Somebody for St. John's and Postel is the most likely of candidates has to grab the rest of the guys and by the scruff and say, it's not gonna happen this time. St. John's had a seven point lead. It's now 46 all. Give Boston College credit, executing their half-court offense very well, getting good percentage shots. Bell with room, he got fouled, he'll shoot three. And Bootsy Thornton's just picked up his fourth foul. And Bell, that happens to him so many times. He's been fouled now 10 times on three-point shots. 
In the scouting, you talk about challenging shots, but one of the cardinal rules is never foul the jump shooter. And of course, we can't see it there, but we'll be able to see it in this shot. There he is, Bootsy Hinson. Uh, Bell misses the first from his previous nine opportunities when he's been fouled on three-point shots. He's made six. Right now, Jarvis and company trying to regroup. He made he's, he's made six. He's made the three. Made six the times. three. Made the three free throws three free six, throw, six times. times. Okay. He really is a very quick player. Gets his shot off quickly. Thornton fourth personal foul. I'm sure Mike is going to play him. I don't think he has much choice right here. Gray with four fouls. Thornton with four fouls. Donald Emanuel with three. Two out of three for Bell. BC leads 48-46 on an 8-0 run. Their pressure has been effective because of St. John's main guards not in the game. He's got to get Shelby Gray back. Way short. Rebound. Harley. Boston College. The chance to build on its lead. There's Beer Bomb underneath. Sets up Bell. He got the shot off. They battle for it. And somehow Glover's able to get it back to Reggie Jesse. Great hustle by Glover. I think Mike Jarvis has to get Chedney Gray back in the game. Mike Jarvis, the second, just stood up and held up the sign Weave. So that's what they're looking for right now. The Weave isolates people, lets them go one on one with not too much help around. Thornton, got to be careful. Muscles his way in. And a foul, it's against Bell. Thornton's got to be careful, he's got four fouls. Bell, big numbers in the second half, Dave. That foul is on Pina, his third. They take a timeout, Boston College has taken a lead. They lead by two, 48-46. We got to get out of this place. If it's the last thing we ever do, we gotta get out of this place. See, I had to get away and blow off some steam. I wanted to book a three, no, a four-star hotel, so I went to Priceline.com, name my own price. Now I'm getting red carpet treatment at shack carpet prices. Yeah, there's a better life for me and you. Memories give me a warm feeling, just like my quiet, efficient ream furnace. Twin Cities has come to rely on a group of dependents. And now they're up 48-46, largely on this production. Bell with 18, 10 for Singletary. Bell in the first half had four points and one of four shooting. And in the second half, five of seven for Bell for 14 points. Usually 46 to 50% of their offense. That is the case again tonight. Bell and Singletary, we talked at the top of the show about how they would have to carry Boston College, and they are. Nice lead, Postel with a hammer. Good inbounds play. Jesse with a terrific pass, 17 for Postel. He has obviously been carrying them on the scoreboard. The senior stepping up on senior day. Tie at 48. But Boston College never lets them get momentum going. You know, a big dunk like that, crowd gets into the game. Boston College handles the ball, runs their offense, maintains poise, and sometimes comes up with something good. Harley, they look for Beerbomb, fouled from behind by Postel. For Postel, that's his first. That was a clear example of outstanding poise by Boston College. You would think a team that's one in seven in the league would fall under the pressure and the momentum, but they have not. Maybe they're growing up a little bit. No question about it. BC 9 and 11 overall, 1 and 7 in the conference. They've lost seven straight games. They're 1 and 4 in the road and 0 and 3 in conference road games. So they are looking for some kind of breakthrough. Bell inside, leaves it for Pina. And that was not the. Wow! Al Skinner just ran onto the floor. Let's see if they have a change here. Let's see, David Dale, he confirmed with Jody Sylvester. Jody with the call saying it went off of Pina's hip. So there's a break for St. John's. Al Skinner is living. And you rarely see Al that exercised. And he's, as, and he has appealed to David Day to check with Jody. He better be careful. Nice tie. This is a very frustrating thing for a coach. Believe me, I've been in this situation before. 
where you could have had the ball. Your player obviously could have had it, felt it was off someone else. Al was at, at the same angle that David Day had, so he thought he saw the play, but Jody Sylvester in front of us said he had a better view of it. St. John's has the ball. Tied at 48, approaching six and a half to go. Lots of time left. That play won't be dramatic in the outcome of the game. Bootsy Thornton got to be careful. Gray's back in the game. Postel, nice fake. Bootsy shoots it. Three ball. Got it. Bootsy. Bootsy. The Boots. He's got nine. His first three of the afternoon. We'll see if Boston College does what they did on their last possession. Maintain poise. Run their offense. They didn't. Bootsy with the steal. Got a give man back. back. They do give it back. Way out. Let's go. 52-48. Al needs a timeout here. So ball goes out of bounds on Boston College, and St. John's has converted it to a 7-0 run. Crowd coming to life for the first time this afternoon with positive energy for the Red Storm. Bell for three. Bell hits it. Oh, my goodness. Troy Bell, 52. 51 St. John's Troy Bell with 21. He has ice in his veins. Maybe that's because he's from Minnesota. Maybe they have a lot of ice in their veins. It's so cold up there. Man, oh man, that was a big time shot by Troy Bell. Right back in the game. 53 51 is the correct score. The scoreboard in the arena is showing 52. And that is incorrect. We have 53-51. Bootsy a little short on that one. Can Glover save it? He does it. So it's out of bounds on St. John's. They're going over to the first half. Zero points for Mr. Thornton. 11 in the second half. He's supposed to stand up. There's some discussion at the play right now at the table. It's Mike Jarvis. They're talking about this, the score. This is beautiful basketball. Give it back. The defense turns his head. Solid. Not spectacular, but beautiful to watch. You know, sometimes we get caught up in the spectacular and don't appreciate the beauty of basketball. And that kind of fast break situation is really how it's designed. And players enjoy playing like that. In its simplest form, there's so much beauty. They have corrected the scoreboard in the arena. 53 to 51. Five minutes to go. Lots of action still involved in this one. Thornton coming up. Troy Bell for the Eagles coming up. Those are the two you would expect to take charge in the second half. Well, we talked about BC playing a lot of close games. Yet another one. And they have gotten away with a double dribble. Jody Sylvester waves it off. No problem. 447 to go and counter. Agby. Bell has just been murdered on St. John's here in the second half. They look for Bell. He's got room. Fires a three. It's wide left air ball. Gray had it knocked out of his hands by Singletary. St. John's did a very interesting thing. They switched every screen. So instead of one guy trying to guard Bell, as soon as Bell came off the screen, whoever that St. John's player was, switched on to him. Very solid. Nice subtle adjustment. They got to get a hand up on Bell. Under four and a half to play in a two-point game. Gray. Got to be careful playing with four fouls. Thornton, he's got four fouls. Postel just one as he attacks. Glover just, oh man, he just steamrolled Pino. The football coach here would love that play. He just <laughs> ran over the little guy. He has taken two charges in this game and sacrificing his body for the cause. I'll tell you what, I give him a badge of courage today. 20th turnover for the Red Storm. And that average is just 12 a game. Take a look at this foul trouble. Wow. Thornton and Gray both with four and Barkley not playing because of the NCAA sanctions. Emmanuel less important in that particular regard. Beat the press. Here's Singletary. Back to Beerbach. Approaching four minutes to go. Red Storm by two. Tina's done a pretty good job running the point. So they let Bell play it too. And Postel's guarding Bell. What a matchup that is. Agby lost it on the way up. And then knocked free. Beer bomb. Singletary. And that's a deuce. And we're tied at 53. Boston College alive and well. The Eagles flying a little bit here. And Jody Sylvester just threw a fan. 
on the baseline. They just threw him out of the game. We got a timeout on the floor. And they've just thrown a fan out of the game who's beefing that call. So, and that is well within the jurisdiction of the officials. So 340 to go. One heck of a contest. 53 all. 340 to go here at Alumni Hall. Good execution on the inbounds there by the Red Storm. We'll be back a beer apart. National Car Rental, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Seven up. Make seven up yours. And by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Welcome back, everybody. St. John's and Boston College tied at 53 with 340 to go. Dave Sims and Bob Wenzel. So we look at a Beck's beer game summary. Eric Barkley suspended indefinitely. NCAA violation. BC, second half. Bell has been on fire, and the turnovers for St. John's were remarkable. That's a big difference. 21 turnovers compared to 12. Can you say where is Eric Barkley? You got that right. Keep in mind, as time goes down here, Gray and Thornton playing with four fouls for St. John's. Matchup zone for BC. Extended. Postel. Check that. Thornton for the three ball. Bootsy <laughs> got that in rhythm. Knocked it down. His second three of the half. He's got 14. Thornton and Bell showing why they are outstanding scorers. Both of them stepping up big in the second half. Thornton with 14 in the second half. Bell with 17 in the second half. That's what they're supposed to do. Singletary. He measures up a three, won't go. Rebound, Bootsy Thornton. Clock running down. Can St. John's win a tight game? They have had some struggles here. The last five games, they've won, they've lost four of the last five. And in those four games, they have let leads get away. They were able to survive against Rutgers. End game situation has not been good. Thornton had 28 against Ohio State, making threes. He wheels on Singletary, won't go. They keep it alive. Beer bomb, make that ag buy, takes over for Boston College. They got numbers. Bell had ag buy running the lane. They couldn't get it to him. Nice defense by Postel to stop that transition break. Postel on Bell. Interesting. Under that, two to play. switching. Here's Bell. Glover Warmer. on Bell. Oh, he wastes him. Baseline spinner. Got it. And the foul. Troy Bell. Troy Bell having a fabulous second half. He's got 23 points, 19 here in the second half. The second leading scorer in the Big East Conference, a freshman. The switching helped, but Glover out of his element at the three-point line, defending a little guy. And Bell has an extremely quick first step. Woo! Check that out. Nice spin move. This guy can play. Bell, three of five at the line today. Way short on that. Pina kept it alive. Can he save it? No, he doesn't. So 147 to go. And Bell could not convert on the opportunity to tie the score at 56. Michael Cott back in for Boston College. Replaces Jonathan Bierbaum. Some pressure from BC. And Mike Jarvis calls a timeout just as well because I think they'd reached the four count or at least the three count down at the other end. All right, if you're Mike right now, given what has happened the last five games, you talk about in-game situations, what's he stressing here? Well, what he's got to do is, you know, defensively, he's got to make sure that they switch out on Bell and try to keep somebody, even double-team him, because he obviously is the offense right now. Offensively, they just got to make sure they crash the boards on any miss, use their athleticism to get involved on the offensive boards. Obviously, he tried to like to run something for Thornton because he has been their hottest player. Thornton with, check that Postel with 17, but Gucci's coming alive. He's got 14. 23 for Tro uh, Troy Bell, 12 for Xavier Singletary. The double figure scores for Boston College. Timeouts, both teams with three. And of course, that's important for both Al Skinner and Mike Jarvis. Plenty of timeouts available for them if any of the players get stuck in tenuous situations. Chudney Gray substituting for Barkley. This is when the point guard becomes more valuable at the end of a game. And for St. John's, that's not a tough, that's not a great situation because Barkley obviously not playing. 135 to go in this ball game. What's been the most successful lately? Weave. Let's see if they run it. Here it is. The weave again. St. John's has won four straight against Boston College. 
He looked Postel. for Postel and Thornton to get involved at the end of the weave, making a play. Under 10 to shoot. Seven, five, Gray puts it on the floor. The pull off is short, barely got the iron. Boston College takes over with a chance to take the lead. Bad possession for St. John's. Maybe that's characteristic of their play down the stretch. Wrong guy taking the wrong shot at the end of a shot clock. Let's see if Boston College does better. They trail by one, obviously, under a minute to go. They've got to get the right shot for the right guy also. Match up here, Bell. Got his man in the air, threw it behind Peter. Gray with the steal. Three on two. Gray spins, takes it up, draws the foul, and he scores. No There's foul. no foul. He draws the contact. Chudney Gray making up for the previous possession. Opens up a three-point lead. Under 40 to play. Timeout, Boston College. Uh, key play. Chudney Gray showing there's no quit in him. Wow, what a great defensive play. Well, you give Gray a lot of credit. He's made two big boo-boos, but each time he has come back to come up big for Boston College. And this is our advanced auto parts play of the game. The best part is our people. Chudney Gray on the move. A spin move to avoid the defense and then uses his body to protect the ball and uses the glass to soften the shot. This is where it really happened. The hustle toward the rebound got scraped across the face, kept his head up. And of course, Chudney Gray doing it when they need it. The advanced auto parts play of the game. Chudney Gray starting today. Probably would have started anyway, being that it's senior day. But he absolutely got to start today with Eric Barkley suspended indefinitely. And for Gray on the afternoon, he's got seven points. Only his fourth start of his career. Three-point deficit. Gray defending. Bell is the most important guy. They got the wrong matchup again. Bell. Double team him. Get it to Cotton. Clock running down. But an eight-second shot differential. Singletary over the top. Three ball. Got the bounce. Kept it alive. Foul on Cotton coming over the top. And Singletary. Well, Singletary's fans, confident, but not was, a good shot. That was the shot that he had to knock down, and he's really upset with himself. 26-9 left in regulation. There is no timeout right here. The clock stops on a made basket violation in the last minute of play. Only the sixth foul on BC, and now Cotton fouls Postel. There's the seven. Well, he fouls probably the wrong guy. Well, you had to foul they him. They had right to there, foul somebody. Right? St. Good, John's good did news, the smart thing. The good news, no time off the clock for BC. And, of course, St. John's doing the smart thing, sending Postel to be the receiver since he's the best free throw shooter on the team, 86%. Six for six today, 17.7 boards. And most of that, well, it's actually at eight in the first, nine in the second, so he's played a pretty balanced game. Well, he's been the most solid player for yep. St. John's today in terms of both halves. Thornton very much present in the second half. Bell obviously present in the second half. So three-point lead, 26-9 to go. Postel can build on it right here. Here's the first. Back rim. Loose ball. Singletary's got it. BC's Bell. got a light. Bell's got to shoot this one. Bell, they get a pick. Shoots a three. It's good. Troy Bell ties it at 58. I knew that was going up. He got the high pick. St. John's not going to call a timeout. They're going to go for it. Here we go. Final 10 seconds. Chutney Gray on senior day. Leaves it for Bootsy Thornton. Thornton running the lane. Hey! Shoot a couple at the line with 4.8 seconds to go. Wow. Al Skinner happy in one moment when Bell knocks in his three in transition. Not too happy now having to foul Thornton. Still plenty of time left to go, 4.8. That last three that Bell took, took about a second and a half for him to get the ball up the floor. Nice screen right here. Everybody with their hand up. Nothing but bottom for Bell. He could do it again in four seconds. Bootsy Thornton, 0 for 1 at the line, just a 58 point, check that, 55.8 percent free throw shooter on the season. Tense moments right here, both squads. Not two. a good free throw shooter, but a tough guy. Sometimes two. these kind of guys shoot poorly overall, but make them in end game. Two shot opportunity. Here's the first for Bootsy. Way the rim didn't happen for him. Well, you talking about the door being open for Boston College. 
Well, on a miss right now, Dave, St. John's has to try to obviously get the ball, but they do not want to foul. BC wants to get the ball in Bell's hands as soon as possible. Bootsy. Second free throw is good. Boston College has two times out remaining. 4.8 seconds to go in the ball game. Both teams. Well, Mike Jarvis calls timeout right here so he, he can set his defense. He doesn't want things like scrambled eggs. And that's the important thing right now. He's going to talk about how they're going to defend Bell. Well, St. John's calls the timeout two times out remaining. This has been a terrific run here. And home in this building in Alumni Hall, 22 in a row for the Red Storm. And November 1996, losing to LIU, maybe the Richie Parker, Charles Jones teams. And right now, very tenuous situation. You don't need a three, a two can win it. 4.8 seconds to go, plenty of timeouts. Nobody's shooting two free throws yet. You do that on the 10th foul. St. John's will be interesting what kind of defense they set up. Boston College wants to talk it over a little bit longer. I don't blame them. Kind of play what you design here. You got to go the length of the floor. It's not like the NBA where you get the ball at mid floor. That's right. right. You have to go the length of the floor, but 4.8 seconds is plenty of time. I would get Bell in the backcourt. One one other player taking the ball out of bounds. The other three BC guys way up the floor, away from the action, and just run Bell by himself to get open, and then let him create from the top as far, as fast as he can. It'll only take him two seconds to get the the ball down the floor. He's got two or three dribbles available to him. If they can't get him the ball, obviously Singletary is the next one. Right. 59, 58, 4.8 seconds to go. St. John's without Eric Barkley, suspended indefinitely by the NCAA for an infraction, and that has been a big story this afternoon here at St. John's. Boston College trying to end a seven-game losing streak. St. John's this time, the chess match continues. St. John's calls a timeout, so the Red Storm and BC both with one timeout remaining. Now, somebody may ask, why is he calling a timeout right now? What, what Mike Jarvis is doing is he saw the alignment that BC is using as they came out of the timeout, and he wants to talk to his team about the possible scenarios. BC did have other players in the backcourt. They had uh, three guys in the backcourt. That crowds things up a little bit and allows the defense to maybe get a shot. If you're St. John's, you do not want anybody to break you down in the middle of the floor. If a guy's going to take a wild shot from deep, you want to funnel him to the side of the court, the sideline. If he goes down the middle, that becomes much more dangerous. Al Skinner really wanting the ball in Bell's hands as quickly as possible. He's got all five guys in the backcourt. They could be breaking long. This makes it more crowded for Bell. They got a double team on Bell. Here's the inbound. There he Bell. goes, the curl, plenty of Bell time. Takes a look at it, gonna get a chance. Here's the shot, it goes up. But it doesn't go. Troy Bell, a fabulous effort, but St. John survives today against the Boston College Eagles. What a finish. Mike Jarvis sweating this one out badly. Barkley not able to play. Bell, the superstar freshman, almost gets it down for the Boston College Eagles. Let's take a look at this. We talked about this ad infinitum. The curl play, plenty of time. Watch the clock. You can get it length of the floor in four seconds easily. He double pumps St. John's, Bootsy Thornton, and Postel challenging. And of course, in and out. Oh, oh man. Tough Boy. loss for Al Skinner and his troops. You got that right. Eight in a row now for Boston College. A Troy Bell with a fabulous performance. 26 points, 22 in the second half. Five threes. So many of them, big shots for the Boston College Eagles who dropped to 9 and 12, 1 and 8 in the Big East Conference. St. John's with the win. They win a tight late game situation to go 14 and 5, 6 and 2 in the conference. That'll do it. For